Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is Thursday, October the 7th, 2021. And you are joining us for our time of reflections. This is a time where we gather uh, Monday through Thursday during the week to read some scripture together and to pray and reflect upon the scripture. So I'm happy that you're joining us today. Uh, if you are, leave us a line in the comment box. Let us know that you're there. It's a great way that we can stay connected as the church body. And um, let's see, we have been using the revised Common Lectionary uh, weekly readings uh, as part of our basis for our, our time together. And today uh, we're still focusing on Psalm 8 and we've got a little piece from Hebrews. So uh, let's, uh, let's see where the scripture take, uh, takes us. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 8, and I've been reading it from different translations each morning. And this morning's translation is uh, a little bit more of a paraphrase. It comes, up, it comes to us from the message. So listen to these words from the psalmist for Psalm 8. God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. Nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk and silence atheist babble. I look at your micro skies, dark and enamorous, your handmade sky jewelry, moon and stars mounted in their settings. Then I look at the macro, the, mac, the micro self and wonder, why did you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? Yet we've so nearly missed being gods, bright with Eden's dawn, Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world repeated to us your Genesis charge, made us stewards of sheep and cattle, even the animals out, of, out in the wind, birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing the ocean depths. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. So, pretty good readings. Well, good morning, Dick and Nancy. Glad to see you guys are joining us. And then our uh, next reading this morning comes from he Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And then we're going to jump over to chapter 2 and read uh, verses 1 through 12. Let's see what the writer of Hebrews has for us this morning. In the past, God spoke through the prophets to our ancestors in many times and in many ways. In these final days, though, he spoke to us through a son. God made his son the heir of everything and created the world through him. The son is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. He maintains everything with his powerful message. After he carried out the cleansing of people from their sins, he sat down at the right side of the highest majesty and the son became so much greater than the other messengers, such as angels, that he received a more important title than theirs. This is why it's necessary for us to pay more attention to what we've heard, or else we may drift away from it. If the message that was spoken by the angels was reliable and every offense an act of disobedience received an appropriate consequence, how will we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? If it was first announced through the Lord and then it was confirmed by those who heard him, heard him God also vouched for their message with signs, amazing things, various miracles, and gifts from the Holy Spirit, which were handed out the way he wanted. God didn't put the world that is coming, the world that we're talking about, under angels' control. 
Instead, someone declared somewhere, what is humanity that you think about them? Or what are human beings that you care about them? For a while you made them lower than angels. You crowned the human beings with your glory and honor. You put everything under their control. When he puts everything under their control, he doesn't leave anything out of control. But right now, we don't see everything under control yet. However, we do see the one who was made lower in order than the in a lower order than the angels for a little while. It's Jesus. He's the one who is now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of his death. He suffered death so that he could taste death for everyone through God's grace. It was appropriate for God for it was appropriate for God for whom all for whom and through whom everything exists to use experiences of suffering to make perfect the pioneer of salvation. This salvation brings to many sons and daughters whom he's leading to glory. This is because the one who makes people holy and the people who are being made holy all come from one source. This is why Jesus isn't ashamed to call them brothers and sisters when he says, I will publicly announce your name to my brothers, to my brothers and sisters, and I will praise you in the middle of the assembly. Well, friends, I, I know that reading was a little long today, but I thought it was pretty good. So uh, let's take a, a few minutes to prayerfully reflect upon the scriptures. And as we do, um, I invite us to focus on this kind of theme from the psalm. Guide us as stewards of your creation. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Guide us as stewards of your creation. 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 Amen. Amen. 
So we're continuing to use our Wesley study note for for our, for our notes for the for for uh, our time together, and uh, here are the ones for uh, chapter one of Hebrews. Hearing God's speech and responding with trust and obedience is the keynote of this sermon. God's incomplete and scattered communications through the prophets come together in the one decisive uttered word in the Son, not just what Christ said, but in who Christ is. The author boldly proclaims the Son's unique relationship to God and to creation, drawing on Jewish reflection on the figure of wisdom found in Proverbs. Then he introduces another keynote of the entire sermon, Jesus' death brought about the decisive purification of our sins. Christ's endurance into the heavenly realm announces the glorious destiny of all disciples, but Christ is also the bridge, as it were, by which we cross over that goal. His own experiences of pain and shame assure us that our path of discipleship though filled with experiences of loss and suffering, will lead to glory, and that our high priest knows from personal experience what we need to arrive there securely. Psalm 8, verses 4 through 6 are quoted here in verses 6 through 9. Speaks of the place of human beings in God's creation. The author points out that people do not yet experience these grand claims as reality. God's design for all humanity stands perfected now only in the one human, Jesus Christ, since he represents our goal and end, moving consistently towards Christ-likeness, hence pressing on to maturity, remains the path that is the goal. And, uh, we also have one of our uh, Wesleyan core terms in this uh, little section, and it's entitled Revelation. How do we know what we know about God? Or how is God made known to us? John Wesley's answer is through God's revelation. God has been revealed in Christ. What has been revealed in Christ is God's love. There is no better interpretation of this revelation in, of God in Christ than, than Scripture. Scripture teaches that Christ is in our hearts, is a divine evidence or conviction of God's free, unmerited love to us as sinners. John Wesley cautions against overvaluing or undervaluing the role that reason plays in Revelation. Reason may help in our understanding, but it cannot produce faith, hope, or love. It is by the work of the Holy Spirit who reveals Jesus Christ to us and makes Scripture real to us. Revelation is ultimately the Holy Spirit making Christ known to us. Some, uh, some good, 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 good notes there. So, you know, I'm I'm really intrigued by uh, by Wesley's notes about God revealing God's self to us, and one of the key things that we have for uh, learning learning and seeing how God is revealing Himself to us is through the Holy Scriptures, through the Bible. God reveals who God is from the beginning of creation to the end of times. And we find in Holy Scriptures the biggest reveal of God, and that is in his son, Jesus Christ. But you know, I also think that God continues to reveal God's self to us even today. Advances in sciences and the more we learn about creation and the more we learn about the human psyche, are all to me ways that God is continuing to reveal himself to us. And that leads me to the thought that we really need to pay attention 
to how and where God is revealing himself today. The caution in verse 1 of chapter 2, this is why it's necessary for us to pay attention to what we've heard or else we may drift away from it. Y'all, that is what we need to do is to pay attention. You know, attending worship and small groups and even watching this devotion each day are good things, but attending them isn't all. We need to make sure that we're taking that information in and we're seeing how God is revealing God's self to us by engaging with the message and what we are hearing. So just some uh, random reflections of mine on this Thursday morning. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get ready to take on the day, shall we? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day because you are an awesome God. God, we also thank you for the ways that you reveal yourself to us, the ways that you reveal yourself to us through scripture, through your son, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you uh, open our eyes and our hearts to seeing where you are active in our lives. And we ask that you also inspire us to tell others about that love and let, and let us uh, show them that love by the way that we interact with the world. God, we ask that you be with all of those who might not be feeling well today. And we ask that uh, you just continually walk beside us, revealing yourself as you see fit. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. Bye for now.